dear rail lovers, welcome to Railways Explained. In this video we remain on the North American continent. In the last video we talked about the non-existent high-speed rail in Canada, while today we're up for something new. Something which is still at the initial planning phase. The construction of a superconducting maglev from Washington to Baltimore. This maglev system was developed by the Central Japan Railway Company and the Railway Technical Research Institute. And it is branded as Chuo Shinkansen. Unfortunately, we haven't made a special video about the Chuo Shinkansen yet, but we will do our best to make it happen as soon as possible. Anyway, in the United States, even before this initiative with superconducting maglev, certain maglev-related activities have been carried out. So, let's first together go through these activities, including the explanation of the interesting process through which these kind of projects should go in case they want to get a federal funding. If you're interested in maglev technology, you can also check out our comprehensive video in which we dealt with the technical aspect of magnetic levitation trains. Now, let's begin. The National Maglev Initiative was established under the Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act of 1991. In 1994, the Maryland Transit Administration prepared the Baltimore-Washington Corridor Maglev Feasibility Study to assess the feasibility of maglev between the two cities. The criteria used required the alignment to allow a top speed of 483 km per hour. The study concluded that the maglev system was feasible and in addition alignment and station options for such a system were identified. Subsequently, the Transportation Equity Act for the 21st century of 1998 established the maglev deployment program, with the purpose of demonstrating the use of maglev system. Through a nationwide competition, FRA selected seven states, including Maryland, to receive grants for pre-construction planning. Let's now discuss the administration and procedure. All projects that require federal funding or federal permits must go through the so-called NEPA process. The National Environmental Policy Act of 1969 created the process that federal agencies follow in order to analyze the potential consequences of proposed projects on the human environment, engage the public and document the analysis to ensure informed decision-making. Compliance with NEPA include preparation of an environmental impact statement. The main step here is the preparation of the draft environmental impact statement with elaboration of the selected project alternatives from various points of view and which need to be available to the public for review and comments. The preparation of a final environmental impact statement incorporates and addresses relevant comments from the public hearing and identifies the preferred alternative. Based on the environmental impact statement and the public comments, a federal agency may issue a record of decision for further project continuation and detailed engineering elaboration through detailed designs. And yes, this process can take a very long time. Ok, let's continue with the maglev deployment program. In 2001, the projects proposed by the seven states were considered in the programmatic environmental impact statement. The Maryland-Baltimore project was selected for continued evaluation and initial project development, including engineering design and analysis. Following the selection of the Maryland project, FRA prepared a draft environmental impact statement in 2003 for a demonstration project linking downtown Baltimore, Baltimore-Washington International Marshall Airport and Union Station in Washington, D.C. The criteria used included attaining a minimum top speed of 420 km per hour. The 2001 Programmatic Environmental Impact Statement and 2003 Draft Environmental Impact Statement even considered German Transrapid Technology, which works on the principle of electromagnetic suspension. The first commercial implementation of this technology was the Shanghai Maglev when it was put into operation in December 2002. We have also made a special video dedicated to all commercial maglev lines in the world, and if you're curious, take a look. Anyway, FRA and MTA published a final environmental impact statement in 2007, however, FRA did not issue a second record of decision, and the project was not advanced further. We did not manage to find any precise reason as why this happened, so if anyone is familiar with the topic, let us know in the comments. And now, let's move on to the Superconducting Maglev Initiative, which was launched in 2015 from a much more comprehensive point of view.
In 2005, the American Congress has passed the so-called Safe Accountable Flexible Efficient Transportation Equity Act, a legacy for users, authorizing funding to study magnetic levitation transportation projects. In March 2015, FRA issued a notice of funding availability to solicit applications for the construction of a maglev system. In April 2015, the Maryland Department of Transportation, Maryland Transit Administration, on behalf of Baltimore Washington Rapid Rail, which is the project sponsor, submitted an application to FRA for the funds to perform preliminary engineering and NEPA studies related to sponsor's proposal to build a superconducting maglev system. Interest even more increased for the Baltimore-Washington project in June 2015, when Maryland Governor Larry Hogan visited Japan to ride an advanced prototype maglev train which traveled at 500 km per hour. In November 2015, the Maryland Authority approved BWRR's application to acquire a passenger railroad franchise to deploy a superconducting maglev system. In 2016, FRA awarded a $27.8 million superconducting maglev grant to MDOT MTA for the proposed action. The project proposal includes the construction and operation of a superconducting maglev system on a great separated fixed guideway powered by magnetic forces. The entire superconducting maglev system from guideway geometry, tunnel configuration, power requirements, vehicle design, train control system and other features need to be designed to operate at a maximum speed of 500 km per hour. At this speed, superconducting maglev would be capable of 15-minute travel between Baltimore and Washington. The project includes two terminal stations in Washington, D.C. and Baltimore and one intermediate station at the BWI Marshall Airport. The system also requires additional facilities, including one train set maintenance facility, two maintenance of wave facilities, and other various smaller facilities. The 15-minute run time associated with 500 km per hour provides travelers in the Baltimore-Washington region an option that is approximately two times faster than the current fastest option and with a service frequency to provide substantial new travel capacity. In addition, the substantially short time may divert a segment of travelers in the Baltimore-Washington region from traveling by automobile and is expected to help reduce road congestion. We need to mention that JR Central and its predecessor Japan National Railways have been researching and developing superconducting maglev technology for over 50 years. The decades of testing and empirical research have enabled JR Central to develop commercial specifications, including operating speeds and corresponding design criteria for optimal performance of superconducting maglev technology. Based on the testing and research, JR Central has found that a speed of 500 km per hour is the maximum operating speed for optimal performance. Let's now talk about the project needs, i.e. what transportation issues superconducting maglev needs to address. The superconducting maglev project needs to address the following transportation issues and challenges. Increasing population and employment. The Baltimore-Washington region makes up one of the largest and densest population centers in the United States. Between 2015 and 2045, the population in this region is projected to increase 23%, along with a 33% increase in employment workforce growing demands on the existing transportation network. Travel demand will continue to increase in the study area along major roadways and railways, including Interstate 95, the Baltimore-Washington Parkway, MD-295, US-29, US-1 and the NEC. Inadequate capacity of the existing transportation network. All of the major roadway corridors between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. include roadway segments that operate at level of service with heavy or severe congestion during a.m. and p.m. peak hours. Increasing travel times According to the 2015 Maryland State Highway Mobility Report, 14 of the 30 most unreliable roadway segments in Maryland are located between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. These segments can experience travel time delays, totaling more than 50 minutes per trip between Baltimore and Washington. The project study area for the superconducting Magla project is roughly bound by I-95 on the west and by the former Washington-Baltimore and Annapolis electric railroad alignment on the east. 
It spans approximately 40 miles north to south and 10 miles east to west. According to the final preliminary alternatives screening report from January 2018, 14 alternatives were identified, which include one no-build alternative and 13 build alternatives with different alignments. Initial alignments generally follow the existing transportation corridors between Washington DC and Baltimore. We will not talk about all the alternatives as it would make this video too long, but we could for example talk about the process of how the main actors in this process came up with the three of these alternatives. On the screen you can see the table that contains descriptions of all the alignments and the no-build alternative. These 14 alternatives went through two levels of analysis. Screening level 1 consisted of a fatal flaw analysis to identify alignments that meet the geometric requirements necessary to achieve and maintain optimal operating speed of the superconducting maglev technology. If an alignment was found to have inadequate geometry, FRA and MDOT eliminated it from further consideration in the screening process. The ability of an alignment to meet acceptable horizontal and vertical geometry was determined by geometric design criteria details, which we have already shown in the table. As you can see on the screen, alignment A, which runs parallel to I-95, does not meet the geometry requirements of curve radius restrictions and is therefore not retained for further analysis. While for example, for alignment I-1, Amtrak modified to Washington, Baltimore and Annapolis, does not impact federal lands, but crosses the existing Amtrak rails and need to be analyzed further in screening too. In addition to the no-build alternative, FRA and MDOT advanced seven of the initial alignments to screening level two. In screening level two, FRA and MDOT applied the screening criteria based on the feedback from governmental agencies and the public concerns related to environmental and socioeconomic factors. For example, impact on residential properties and community resources or construction feasibility of an alignment in the context does the proposed alignment require crossing the existing Amtrak rail operations. According to the results of the screening level 2, for example alignment G has a high potential impact on residential properties and a high potential impact on parks and it was not selected for further analysis. Based on the results of the screening level 2 and the review of the public comments, FRA and MDOT recommended that alignments J and J1 be carried forward for further engineering development and environmental evaluation. Both build alternatives generally follow a common route and the Baltimore-Washington Parkway. Build alternative J is on the east side of the BWP and build alternative J1 is on the west side of the BWP. In draft environmental impact statement, these two alternatives are further developed depending on the position of the stations and ancillary facilities. For example, there are two options for the Baltimore area station, Cherry Hill and Camden Yards. The build alternatives J, BWP East are a combination of a tunnel section and a viaduct. This alternative extends 33 to 36 miles end to end depending upon which Baltimore station option is selected and would average approximately 75% or 25 to 27 miles of a tunnel and 25% or 8 to 9 miles of a viaduct. The proposed alignment would be in a tunnel under Washington DC from the newly constructed station near Mount Vernon Square to east of the Capitol Beltway. After crossing under the Capitol Beltway, the guideway would transition from a tunnel to a viaduct on the east side of the BWP between the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center overpass and Beaver Dam Road. A portal structure would transition the guideway between the tunnel and the viaduct. Alternative would generally follow the east side of the BWP travel lanes on viaduct through federal lands before returning to a tunnel on Fort George G. Meade. Guideway would then continue north in a tunnel toward a newly constructed underground BWI Marshall Airport Station. North of the airport, Guideway would continue in a tunnel to Baltimore and the newly constructed station. The build alternatives J1 BWP West alignments is a combination of a tunnel sections and viaduct 2. BWP West alternative would range in length approximately 33 to 36 miles depending on the Baltimore station option selected and would average approximately 83% of a tunnel and 17% of a viaduct. Similar to BWP East, the BWP West would be in a tunnel under Washington DC from the newly constructed station towards the Capitol Beltway. The guideway would transition to a viaduct, but unlike BWP East, BWP West would align on the west side of the BWP between the NASA facility overpass and Beaver Dam Road. 
BWP west would generally follow the west side of the BWP on a viaduct, then continue on a viaduct adjacent to residential developments in South Laurel. The guideway would transition to a tunnel south of Maryland City and turn east towards a newly constructed independent underground BWI Marshall Airport Station. The guideway would continue in a tunnel to Baltimore and newly constructed independent station. The project sponsor's proposal and recommended preferred end-to-end -end configuration is the Build Alternatives J alignment with Cherry Hill as the North Terminus Station and Chain Maintenance Facility in west part of the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center. BWRR favors this alternative for its shorter construction, ability to avoid and mitigate impacts, and lower construction and operating costs. BWRR believes that this alternative will be the least impact and lowest cost to construct, operate, and maintain while also providing the earliest start to revenue service. Ridership forecasts were developed by the project sponsor in order to provide a range of inputs into the assessment of potential transportation impacts. Forecast-related data is provided for the years 2030 as the opening year and 2045 as the horizon year by Baltimore Station Scenario. A sensitivity analysis was conducted on a range of fares as the first step in establishing the superconducting maglev ridership demand forecast. A varied set of fares ranging between $27 and $81 depending on trip purpose and travel distance was used to generate a base case ridership demand forecast assuming station locations at Cherry Hill, BWI and Mount Vernon Square. As you can see on the screen, the number of forecasted passengers for 2030 depending on the location of the station is from 17 to almost 19 million passengers a year, which is about 50,000 passengers a day for the opening year. It is expected that the largest number of passengers will be diverted from cars around 66%, while new induced traffic will be around 15%. Of course, we wanted to show more detailed data, but the final report of the project is censored, as you can see on the screen. Regarding the costs, they depend on selected alternative and are in range from $10.6 to $12.9 billion. If we take into account the preferred alignment of project sponsor, the cost is roughly $10.6 billion. We certainly believe that this is not enough and that this will increase greatly after more detailed engineering and technological designs are made. However, we need to take into account that no construction funding has been allocated for the project at the time and that it is necessary to attract certain investments. Construction of the entire superconducting Magla project will take approximately 7 to 8 years. Construction will begin after completion of the final engineering design and required federal, state and local permits and approvals. Construction of the superconducting maglev project will include activities such as digging and tunneling using multiple tunnel boring machines, ground clearings, pile divings, excavating grading and the stockpiling of soil, muck and materials. It is estimated that more than 23 million cubic yards of soil will be disposed. As for the status of the project, the FRA released the draft environmental impact statement on January 15, 2021. On August 25, 2021, the FRA has paused the project to review project elements and to determine the next steps. The target completion date for a combined final environmental impact statement and record of decision is January 28, 2022. This was the story of the superconducting maglev dream between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. on Railways Explained. For the end, it's good to mention that this is only the first segment of the planned Washington-New York Northeast Maglev project with a goal of one-hour service between these two cities. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the maglevs of the world. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your rail-loving friends, and of course, subscribe to our channel. If you want to go a step further and want to help us improve our production, visit our Patreon page and consider becoming our Patreon. Until the next time, goodbye.